You're tuned into the first newscast devoted to the Highland Lakes area. Local team coverage on Tribune Headline News. Bringing you the stories you care about now. Hi, I'm Jared Fields in for Connie Swinney this week. This is the Picayune TV on Northland Channel 15. Let's take a look at your headlines. A severe drought continues to take its toll on the Highland Lakes. Ranchers struggle to water livestock and crops. The latest estimates show that the blistering drought has caused an estimated $5.2 billion in crop and livestock losses. Some parts of the state have not had rain since last fall. The previous record annual loss was $4.1 billion in 2006. AgriLife Extension agents say the state would need almost five inches of rain in the next two months to avoid breaking the 1956 record for the driest 12 consecutive months. In our next headline, a grandfather in Burnett is arrested, accused of leaving a firearm in his nightstand that was used in the accidental shooting of a nine-year-old boy. James Edward Borland is charged with making a firearm accessible to a child resulting in serious bodily injury. That's a Class A misdemeanor. According to court documents, the nine-year-old grandson of Borland found the gun in a drawer next to his bed. The boy's 12-year-old stepbrother was putting the gun away when he accidentally pulled the trigger, police say, and the nine-year-old suffered a gunshot wound to his leg and was taken to an Austin hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Borland was released from Burnett County Jail after posting bond. Coming up later, Picayune TV hosts a cash giveaway at area high school football games. We have the details. While high school football and fall go hand in hand, don't let that fool you to think that cooler weather is on the way this weekend. A look at the high school kickoff conditions and weather later. Welcome back. A proposed grocery store in Horseshoe Bay is making news before its grand opening. We reported earlier this summer that Jamel's grocery store is scheduled to be built at 9710 FM 2147 in Horseshoe Bay. But now the center's developer says more is on the way in the Horseshoe Bay Center. Jamel's will anchor the first building in the three-phase upscale development that will be part of a 40,000 square foot, $8 million complex to be built over the next two years. The center will include the sales office of the trails of Horseshoe Bay, a real estate development, and a coffee shop. Site work and construction of the store has begun. Foundation work is expected to start in September, and if all goes according to plan, the building will begin to be erected at the end of September. The forecast continues to heat up. Just how much though? Well, here's Daniel Clifton with more. The temperatures keep pushing the mercury higher despite hopes earlier this week we would see a bit of a drop off. This weekend looks to be one of the hottest of the year with temperatures hitting the 107 to 108 range. Those high readings should continue through Monday. High school football begins tonight with kickoffs around 7.30 p.m. But even at that time expect temperatures to still be in the 90s. You may enjoy some 80 degree readings by the end of the game but there's no need for any blankets. Friday, high temperatures should hit the 105 to 106 range during the day before dropping back into the upper 70s during the night. Saturday and Sunday, we're looking to see extremely hot temperatures over the weekend. Forecasts are calling for the highs of, on Saturday and Sunday to possibly reach 108. Even for Texas, this is extremely hot, so take precautions when outside and pay particular attention to children and the elderly. The lows should fall only back to the 77 to 80 degree range during the night. Monday. Not much relief in sight from the high temperatures early next week. Temperatures will again reach some high marks in the 106 to 107 range. Not much relief in store for the Highland Lakes even next week. Long range forecasts indicate the high pressure system will continue to push us well above the 100 degree mark. That's your weather on Northland Channel 15 and the Picayune TV. Thank you Daniel for that report. The latest in youth sports is next. It's a heavy dose of football. We're going to get you caught up on the Mustangs coming up in sports. Coach Larry Bergman takes a hands-on approach to coaching, and he takes that same approach to handling your car. So join Coach's team and give your car, truck, or boat the MVP treatment at Coach Wash, where our customers call the plays. We are established. We are qualified. We are certified. 
We are knowledgeable. We are dependable. We are Ken's Heating and Air. Our people make the difference. Last season, Marble Falls High School football team traveled to San Marcos to take on the Rattlers. Knowing that Marble Falls was going to win was a foregone conclusion. However, few people could have imagined a 42-0 blowout led off with an 80-yard quarterback run by Zed Warner to start the scoring. Now, Marble Falls is going to welcome the Rattlers to Mustang Stadium to start the 2011 season. We did get a chance to talk to head coach Cord Warner about his team headed into the season opening. Here's what he had to say. Well, honestly, I've been, like I told you before, I've been kind of surprised and I've been very pleased with them. They, uh, uh, they've matured a little bit. They've kind of stepped up and, and executed a little better than I thought we would at this point. There's some areas that we still need a lot of work on, but uh, uh, these guys are doing enough things right that I feel like uh, we're going to be ready to play Friday. While the Mustangs are going to be playing at home, the Faith Academy Flames will be on the road to Colleen Memorial on Friday night. Of course, that kickoff is set for 7.30. In order to help fans who want to stay up on what the Flames are doing in Colleen, Faith has decided to open a Twitter account. So what you do is you go to twitter.com and do a search for FAMF Sports, and then that will take you to a page where you can stay caught up on what the Flames are doing throughout the season. I did get a chance to talk to Athletic Director John Berkman, who said that for sure the Flames will be doing this for all the out-of-town games, and they have a commitment to do it for the home games. Again, Faith Academy will be at Colleen Memorial, and on Friday, we're going to give you some things to look for during that contest. That's it for sports. I'm Jennifer Fierro. Jared, back to you. Jennifer, thanks. Marble Falls High School football fans have another way to listen to the Mustang games, and they'll be on Northland Channel 15. The Marble Falls Athletic Booster Club and the Picayune TV have made a deal to place game coverage on TV. The Booster Club launched the Mustangs audio broadcast last season, allowing fans to listen to the games via computer. Organizers say the TV audio cast on Channel 15 was the next logical step. The Marble Falls High School Booster Club is a nonprofit organization accepting sponsorships to benefit youth sports. Check out the website on your screen to find out more. And if you make it out to the area high school football games this season, the Picune TV wants to give away cash with a new competition called Target Toss. We're inviting fans at home football games for Marble Falls, Burnett, and Faith Academy to sign up for the competition. You might have seen the contest at professional games. Participants win cash by throwing a football through a hole. Hit the target from five yards away to win $50 and 10 yards to win $100. Here's a look at some of the upcoming dates for the toss. This Friday, August 26th, our first target toss will be held at Mustang Stadium when the Marble Falls Mustangs take on San Marcos. And then the next two events will be held at Faith Academy September 2nd and then Burnett High School on September 9th when they host the Mustangs. Be sure and sign up at the games and work on those throwing arms. Those were your headlines. Thanks for watching everyone. For the Picayune TV, I'm Jared Fields.